some of her information does seem to be maybe too basic sometimes potentially outdated in many people's opinion can be quite dangerous at times Look, here's the thing. I, I need your help. I'm planning a pretty big video in the next few weeks and I need your input to help me with it. I don't want to give too much away, so I'm not going to say too much, but I'd really appreciate it if you comment down below or send me a message on Instagram if you'd rather, telling me who your favourite Gymshark athletes are of any gender. But now that's out of the way, we're going to jump straight to it. And you know who we're talking about because you've already seen the title of the video, and that's Courtney Black. Courtney is a UK-based influencer who's absolutely boomed in the last year or so. She creates workout guides, she's also got an app in which she talks about nutrition, training. I've looked through her app, I've looked through many of her guides. This video is mainly my opinion based on what I have seen. She has successfully managed to get a lot of people into training or exercise to some degree, and that is huge. And I can only appreciate what she's done regarding increasing the activity levels of the population. Some of her information does seem to be maybe too basic, sometimes potentially out dated in many people's opinion can be quite dangerous at times. In the grand scheme of things the base quality of the information is relatively solid and although especially recently due to what's been going on in the world she doesn't have a mass amount of footage of her inside the gym when she is doing squat variations like this from what it seems to me she is hitting depth which is great and from her workout guides when she does give demonstrations of the movements she is hitting depth and on her app she gives basic cues to follow which I think are really great i.e she talks about keeping the knees in line with the toes and for obvious reasons I can't actually show the programs because I think they'll probably breach some kind of copyright laws all I say is there's a relatively decent balance of exercises although I would prefer maybe a bit less volume so a lot of the workouts especially on her app are very volume intensive there's a lot of movements and a lot of sets and reps of those movements. And to me, I think that's just a bit too much. She was pushing in up maybe 10, 11, up to 12 movements in some cases. Before we get any further, just quick thing. If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate if you did like the video. 120 likes and you know I'm going to make more videos like this. I'd also really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and maybe share with your friends if you find this video useful. When I check YouTube and see comments from people saying how the videos help them or that they subscribe to the channel because they love the content, that genuinely brings a smile to my face and it really adds massive amounts of value to my day. TFL is something I really care about and helping people is something I also really care about. My videos never come with negative intentions. I'm just trying to do what I can to better the industry for everybody. And to be honest, these last couple of weeks, I've been so overwhelmed with all the positive comments, all the positive feedback and all the support you guys are showing me. I don't think I'll ever be able to put into words how appreciative and thankful I am. But one last thing before we jump into the rest of the video, don't forget comment question of the week, which I'll answer at the end of this video. Every week I answer a question from the comment section below, drop it down below and I'll do so next week. But one of the downsides I did find with some of the workouts but again not all of them a few of the workouts and some of the guys for example were very much focusing on isolation work and a lot of banded work rather than pushing compound movements such as squats deadlift variations etc but the guys as a whole were really detailed and thoroughly thought out which i appreciate for 30 pounds per guide it's not awful value for money considering a few of the ones i looked at were over 90 pages with a lot of decent pre-programmed notes and quite a few meal examples of recipes included as well which is always an added bonus although one of the things that i did note from her guides she speaks about how the higher rep range is being like 15 to 20 plus is the best rep range for resistance training when in a calorie deficit therefore like losing weight losing fat every rep range has a purpose no matter what phase of training you're going through whether you're bulking so in a calorie surplus trying to gain muscle or cutting so in a calorie deficit trying to lose fat and maintain muscle i don't think your resistance training really needs to change the mass amount one of the best ways of maintaining muscle mass when in a calorie deficit is to perform compound movements and maintain your strength one of the best ways of gaining muscle mass when in a calorie surplus is to perform compound movements and increase your strength. And if you can increase your strength while in a calorie deficit, you're laughing. This hat is really hurting my head, but I can't take it off because I look like Justin Bieber when he was doing the Never Say Never movie. Also, I want to say that's a fat movie and I rate it highly, hence I've seen it like five times. And one of the biggest things that was kind of flagged to me initially from people who suggested I talk about Courtney was the potential overcomplication of some of her movements. So for example, here you're seeing a single arm ranger, which essentially is like a mountain climber burpee variation kind of hybrid. Both of them are effective movements for getting moving, essentially burning calories, yes. Things like this, I think, could be deemed as slightly overcomplicated and unnecessary 
at times. When a movement is more complicated and there's more essentially moving parts, there is a higher likelihood of injury. And I do understand there's a lot of pressure on social media regarding making your content look a certain way, or maybe look more appealing. But all I'll say is kind of try not to let the social media pressures steer you away from simple yet effective movements and kind of steer you towards movements like this that are potentially unnecessarily overcomplicated. You are sweating, you are feeling very out of breath and the movement is going to be very hard. Hard doesn't necessarily mean effective. If your primary goal is calorie expenditure and you're looking at just burning as many calories as you can in a given period of time, movements like this will be quite effective in that sense because you will be moving a lot, therefore burning a lot of calories. But regarding muscle maintenance and muscle mass and muscle strength, etc, etc, movements like this aren't what I would deem to be optimal. One of the things I will give to her is I find Courtney very inspiring because she is very enthusiastic and she always looks like she's enjoying herself. It's also great to see that she includes things like deload weeks in her workouts. So a lot of people overlook the importance of recovery. But now let's have a quick look at the nutrition side of things. The quality of the video for some reason is really bad. It's at 360p. I'm not sure why that is. Is it possible to build your glutes and lose fat at the same time? When you're trying to lose fat, you're in a calorie deficit. So you're eating less and you can do exercises that are gonna focus on strengthening your glutes, um, toning them, sculpting them, shaping them but you're not going to be able to necessarily build them because you're in a calorie deficit. I appreciate the fact that she's now stating to the person who's asked the question, you can't expect to gain muscle whilst losing fat. The one thing that I kind of don't really like is the oversimplification of terms. Obviously she mentions toning, which I'm not going to get into as you know my thoughts on that, but she also mentions about shaping and sculpting your muscles. Shaping almost implies that you could change the origins and insertions of the muscle. Everyone has a basic shape to their muscle, that's genetically determined. You can't change the shape of it, you can only add to it i.e. if my biceps are very short and therefore have quite a big peak I can't change I can't make them longer and change the shape of them but I can add to the size of them therefore making the peak bigger if that makes sense and some of the videos she speaks about kind of starvation mode and how you need to avoid it but you shouldn't be in a calorie deficit for too long because your body goes into starvation mode but ultimately the concept of starvation mode which is essentially eating too little and therefore actually gaining weight as a result of it and gaining fat as a result of it has largely been disproven Steffi Cohen has spoken about this quite a lot in some of her Instagram posts and I believe on YouTube as well. This post in particular caught my eye because I was a little bit disappointed by it. She speaks about achieving a healthy weight, which is fantastic. You need to achieve a weight that you are happy with. It needs to align with your happiness and your goals. But then she goes on to speak about BMI, but that's a very outdated means of gauging whether you're at a healthy weight because it doesn't take into consideration very important factors such as how much muscle mass you may have. You may have quite a lot of muscle mass for your frame and therefore your BMI would state that you're overweight or maybe even obese. That's not necessarily true. If you do an average amount of activity with an average level of muscle mass and essentially don't resistance train, then sure, I'm sure it could give you a basic guideline of whether you're a healthy weight or not. But if you train for a goal or a purpose, it's probably not going to be the best thing for you. So if I go on the NHS BMI calculator and put in my details, let's see what comes up. So I'm six foot two. I'm, let's say, about 100 kilos in the morning and I'm 27 years old. I identify as male. I am white and I'm... I'm very active, I would say, I'm active. So immediately here, I'm towards the top end of overweight and I'm not far off obese. And considering I'm in a gaining phase or a bulking phase, I will likely hit the obese range within the next couple of months. If I have visible abs and vascularity, am I overweight, am I obese? My weight would suggest yes but my body fat would suggest no. Then going back to the app a bit, I had a look at her meal calculator and her macro planner basically. And to be honest, I'm actually really impressed with this because remember I did this with Chrissy Seller's Tone and Sculpt app. Now I've done it with Courtney Black's app and Courtney Black's macro guidance was far more realistic than Chrissy's was. She stated that she'd be on about 3.7 thousand calories, which isn't far off, it's near enough. Like that's, that's impressive. 122 grams of fat, which again, is pretty much what I'm on now anyway, 366 grams of carbs, which is a bit low in my opinion, and 274 grams of protein, which is a bit high in my opinion. When you are in that bulking phase, you don't really need to push more than one gram of protein per pound of body weight. But my conclusion is this, the foundation of the information is actually pretty good. I just think that it's overcomplicated in some cases, in some cases also outdated, and it's altered in a manner that almost devalues it because of potentially social media pressures. If you're looking for workouts, especially home workouts, that are gonna burn a lot of calories because they're very active and very 
intensive in that regard, they're not a bad shout. If you're looking for sustainable workouts that are gonna help you with the maintenance of muscle mass when in a deficit, or maybe even the gaining of muscle mass when in a surplus, I personally lean towards looking at someone like Lucy Davis Fit, who's a Gymshark athlete. She's pushing out great content, especially when it comes to resistance training. She has the potential to become one of the most powerful influencers in fitness. It's just a shame that the quality of her information isn't just a little bit better. But again, these are just my opinions, these are just my thoughts. She's doing a great thing for the community and I appreciate that. I do think some of the movements are overcomplicated and there is a potential for a greater likelihood of injury because of that, especially when done in quick succession of each other like a hit style workout. And the information is somewhat basic and almost oversimplified in some cases and sometimes outdated. But as a whole, I was actually really impressed with the macro side of things and the nutrition side of things on her app. Do I think there are better people out there to follow? Yes, mainly because again, I'm a big believer in resistance training regardless of what your gender is and regardless of what your goals are. I think for most people, resistance training is gonna be really beneficial for you. For that reason, I would probably lean towards people like Steffi Cohen, Lucy Davis Fit, Natasha Ocean. If your primary goal is just burning calories due to really intensive, short blasted circuit work, then yeah, you are going to burn a lot of calories doing these workouts. Just be really careful with the execution of exercises because I don't want you to hurt yourself. But now here it is, comment question of the week. What is wrong with cable machine kit bags? The thing is, there's nothing wrong with them per se. Personally, I think there are better movements to do that should take priority over them. The big thing to consider is how powerful the glutes are as a muscle group. If you ever do hip thrust, you'll realize that you can shift far more weight than you'd ever expect. But when you're doing a movement like a cable kickback in which you're shifting quite a light weight in comparison to how much force your glutes can exert, they may be prioritized too much and may be seen as more beneficial and important than they should be in a program. If you're gonna do them, I'd probably treat them as part of your warm up, or maybe as a finisher, like the last movement you do. But nine times out of 10, I probably wouldn't put them in a workout myself. But again, that's just my opinion. Look, here's the thing. I know, I know what you're thinking, Harry, where's the puppy? Why is the puppy not here? The, the puppy's been asleep. Every time I film a video, the puppy's asleep, but the puppy always wakes up, come, come see what I'm doing. So, like, well, Harry, what are you doing? We film a video. Okay, let me jump in, take the limelight. You know, the usual thing that puppies do. He's in the other room. He's asleep. He's not coming to see me. Maybe I'm not loud enough, or maybe he just needs a break from all the paparazzi that keeps turning up at the house looking for the puppy to take pictures of. Who knows? I'll ask him later. But And obviously I don't want to wake him up because he's a little puppy. He's my little puppy boy, and I don't want to interrupt his sleep because it's very important for puppies. So I'm very sorry the puppy has not made an appearance. Uh, that is my fault. I should have timed his sleep schedule better and timed this video better. Please forgive me. Again, that is the video. The usual things I said earlier, like the video if you want to like the video, it would mean a lot to me. And it also shows me that you like this kind of content. So 120 likes and you know we'll do it again. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It means the world to me. And honestly, I can't express how amazing the support has been recently. Old subscribers, new subscribers, whoever you are watching this video, thank you so much for tolerating my content. And thank you so much for supporting TFNL. And whether you agree or disagree with what I'm saying, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And the last thing I'll say before I let you go is if you have a question you want me to answer in the next video, comment question of the week, drop it down below and I'll pick one and answer next week. Thank you so much for everything and thank you for tolerating the video.